Hello and welcome to The Sherlock's Show. I'm Georgie Corridge-Cole and joining me on the sofa today is Laura Black, Sherlock's Deputy Editor, as well as a new face and, if you're a long-time viewer of the show, a familiar face. A big welcome to Sherlock's Features Editor, Harriet Russell, who joined Sherlock's in December, along with Tor Cardona, our once Health and Beauty Editor and now new Wellness Editor. Welcome to you both. Coming up in today's chat, we're going to be discussing our favourite Oscar looks of all time. Plus, the sexiest man in the world has officially been revealed and we'll be sharing our thoughts along with fresh off the press news about everyone's favourite Netflix series, The Crown. Later, we'll be bringing you the things we love, sharing our recommendations for everything from fashion and beauty to podcasts and food. Plus, the nation's favourite nutritional therapist, Amelia Freer, will be here talking me through her store cupboard essentials. So, there's plenty to get through. Harriet... Tor, welcome. Thanks. How lovely to have you back. It feels the same but different. Um, anyway, yeah. it's lovely Good to have you back. back. There was a lot of love for Tor in yesterday's behind the scenes episode. So a lot of love. Yeah, clearly, nice. everyone feels like I do, and you're back where you belong. Um, <laughs> but first, today we're going to talk about the Oscars. It's the Oscars on Monday. It's back to back this year, isn't it? We haven't got a show on Tuesday, so we thought we'd have a bit of Oscars love today. Uh, a new survey has just been revealed listing the best Oscar looks of all time. Angelina Jolie, number one. Uh, what do we think of this one? Are you, are you with the survey? Is it your favourite, Laura? No, it's not my favourite. I mean, it's not... I don't think it's the worst by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not my chosen no. favourite. I could list a few above that. Yeah, me too, yeah, me too. Me I was too. a bit disappointed with that mm. being number one. Me too. I didn't love it. And didn't you say, like, 3,000 people would... Because sometimes, sometimes yeah. these surveys kind of come out of nowhere and you never know who, who's kind of voted for them. But you said it was a, quite a big one. Yeah, three and a half thousand Which, people yeah. across the fashion industry, apparently. Mm. Although who those people were, they, uh, they don't say. But yes, it was um, highly voted. To me, she's not quite pure enough to wear a white dress like that. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm sure lots of people would have, but I, I think she's one of the most beautiful women in the world. But just not in white silk like that. It just doesn't work for me. Um, Laura, who is your all-time... Oscar favourite when it comes to fashion on the so red carpet? So I had a few, um, but I think I've gone with Margot Robbie in Chanel Couture. I just thought she looked incredible. I, I loved her look. I loved the dress, was amazing, but then her hair with the bag, she kind of kept it, like, cool as well as being Oscars ready. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's, yeah. I, that was... I have a to say, balance. We, I often say Laura and I, as cut, we know we think exactly the same. <laughs> I actually don't love that. Do you not? No, I don't. I think she looks like she should be getting married. And I love Ooh, her. Well, I, I love like Angelina Jolie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah mm. but I just no, 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 I don't know, I don't. didn't do it. I felt like she should be in church, not on the red carpet. <gasps> What's that short hair? <laughs> hair amazing. Dress, not so much oh, for that occasion okay. for me. Anyway, um, only my opinion. Uh, <laughs> Harriet, no, Tor, you're next. Tell me. So I, for me, Charlize Theron in 2004 just sums up the epitome mm. of Hollywood glamour. I love all of that. And the, to me, the hair, the makeup kind of made that look. Yes. Amazing. Um, it's flawless. Love it. Absolutely I struggled. Love it. When, I was, when I was coming up with mine, I mean, mine, mine it was clear, but I was like, oh, that Charlize Theron, she's wearing Gucci, isn't she? Mm. And it's just... The back. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Back, the hair and Golden the... Golden... Beautiful. Goddess. Goddess. Yeah. Love it. Literally. Love it. Harriet? Yeah, my, mine was um, Reese Witherspoon in 2006, which was um, a Dior dress, and it was the year that she won Best Actress for Walk the Line. And for me, similar to Tor, but obviously quite different, it's Hollywood glamour, but to me it's vintage Hollywood yeah. glamour. And I can remember when she... Mm. I mean, there'd been a big build-up that year to her on the carpet, and I can remember when she stepped out thinking that... She just looked like Grace Kelly, and I think she still does today. Yeah. Really timeless, I think, in years to yeah. come, people will still look back and yeah, say, that, that, that yeah, dress is 14 dress. years old now. Yeah. And, yeah. and if someone were to wear it next week, I think it would win the same yeah. sort of enthusiasm. I mean, it's hard to call a dress like that understated, but there is something mm -hmm. not so showy about that kind of dress, isn't there? Um, well, I, I break the rules, because uh, I can, I choose too. <laughs> um, I went for... Um, Gwyneth Paltrow, I don't know who did my cards, but they're wrong. She's not wearing Tom Ford, she's wearing Calvin Klein, but she does look amazing. I know you love her in the white Tom Ford with yeah, Kate. Love um, her. But this is actually Calvin Klein, and it's silver, and the jewellery, and the brooch, and the hair. And I just remember this. I remember this so well. Uh, and I always wake up really early on Oscars Day, and it just blew me away. So that was my favourite. My other one was um, Kate Hudson in Versace, which. Mm. 
It looks, it, is it Versace or Ellie Saab? It's Versace, it's isn't Versace, it? It's Versace, and incidentally, that is number two on the poll as it well. It is number so. two, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it's another beautiful. classic. So, and I love, I put someone on the red carpet in a blush dress, and mm. I'm happy. Anyway, uh, it's quite fun. I enjoy doing yeah. that. Uh, anyway, if you want to see the list, um, you can find it. It's on onbuy.com. Kira Knightley and Valentino, Beyonce and Versace, another incredible look. Um, I know it's quite fun. Mm. Love visiting. Yeah, bring on next week. week. Yeah. There's an amazing one of Audrey Hepburn. Mm. I can't remember who she's wearing from years ago in the 60s. I think it might be Givenchy, but don't quote me. It is Givenchy with a bow. Yeah. Mm. And that's an amazing look. I nearly picked that one too. Um, anyway, from the red carpet to the Queen. It has been revealed that Imelda Staunton is going to play the next Queen in series number five. Mm. In the last one. Last She's ever. only got one series. It's a shame, isn't it? Um, Gillian Addison is to play Margaret Thatcher, and they're not going to be going up to the modern day and bringing in the Harry and Meghan saga. What do you think about the casting? Happy with that, Harriet? Yeah, I think it is good casting. Imelda Staunton's an, an incredible actress. Um, but I think every time they've announced a new actress for the Queen, I always think, oh, yeah, OK, good, I can go with it. But I'm always still intrigued to finally see the transformation and see sort of if they get sort of the posture right mm. and obviously the, with the hair. Yeah, the walk. The walk. Mm. The walk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's such a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I have to admit, I'm actually an, uh, not anti-crown, but I'm really not a crown fan. Ooh. Ooh. You're not. No, is that a terrible thing to say? I, actually, I did find this series a, a bit... I'm Dull. still yeah. pushing on through. Yeah, it's first of all, because it's good at the two. end with Margaret and Snowden. That's really good. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll anyway. keep going. I like the way that the queens are getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shrinking. Yeah. That's life, isn't it? Julian Anderson, Margaret Thatcher, that should be quite good. Yes, I love her. I've seen some of the photographs, amazing, because I think she actually will appear for the first time in the in season four. Mm. Um, and yeah, she looks, I mean, the transformation is quite, really? quite convincing. So. Cool. I'm delighted they're not going up to the modern day. I think it's a bit disrespectful. I mean, they are still alive. Yes. They are amazing. They work bloody hard. And I imagine legally I just, it probably gets a bit mm, yucky yes. too. Yes. Um, well, on the subject of Netflix, which obviously produces The Crown, uh, the Disney Plus streaming service has launched, no, is launching in the UK in March. It's $5.99 a month, $59.99 for a year. And already nearly 30 million people have signed up in the USA. Wow. It's mega, isn't it? That's yeah. Money. I like the statistic for how many people have signed up to Netflix. Don't know. Anyway. The thing is, that what, surely there's a lot of Disney films already on Netflix. I mean, I, I don't watch that much Disney. But this is not about Disney mommy, films, I don't think. Is, is it, it only Disney? This is it's what, only Disney content. Yeah, it's only that. I just and they'll the start developing their own in, in the way that right. other streaming services have. But they're not all cartoons. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Disney producing yeah, 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 a series, yeah. 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 Mm. And actually, I don't think there's that much Disney content elsewhere, actually. I think they've really? kept their... Well, I think maybe at the beginning, but they've slowly taken the licences back mm -hmm. because okay. they've obviously they've been, been making their own their, plan. Waiting for their time. Um, but yeah, 30 million. And it only launched in the US in November. So that's two months' worth. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's been incredibly quick. But of course, Disney are hitting that peak now where streaming has become so normal that you probably have a ready and waiting audience, whereas Netflix yeah. sort of had to grow yeah, from that's zero. That's so true. So, yeah. That's so, so true. true. So true. Um, just quickly, are you a Netflix subscriber? What's yeah. everyone's thing? Yeah, I'm a Netflix subscriber. I'm, I'm not Anything sure else? I'll be adding Netflix and Spotify. I'm pretty... Yeah. I, I, I'm not sort of doing all of them, but no. that's enough for me. No, it seriously adds up if you do yeah. that. There's quite a, good, a lot of good stuff on Amazon Prime. I have to say, I'm a big, I love like Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime you yeah. Amazon Prime yeah. too? Yeah. 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 So all of them. Yeah. Um, Amazon Prime. Yeah. Amazon Prime. And it's sort of an interesting topic at the moment. The BBC is under I a bit know. of fire. Yeah. But actually on iPlayer, there's some great stuff. So, yeah. you know, they put Lady Macbeth on there recently, yeah. which is a yeah. Florence Pugh film. Really highly recommend that. So, yeah, dig around iPlayer. There's, there's more yeah. stuff on there. And, there's there's and good, um, good box sets as well on iPlayer. Great box sets, yeah. yeah. Great thing on iPlayer, someone mentioned the other day, they were watching called, I think it's called Le Disparu. It's... Oh, the disappearance. Anyway, it's, it's a couple of years old. It's really good. Someone's nodding. I think they've seen it. Have you seen it, Daisy? It's good, isn't it? Really good. Anyway, it's, about, it's in French with subtitles about a girl that disappears. Fancy that. And anyway, it's excellent. So there's really, I agree. Good mm. stuff on iPlayer. Uh, right, we're going to finish off with some sexiest man alive The chats. best subject. <laughs> I'm sure there are sexiest females before people say that's so inappropriate in this day and age. I think it's okay to say that a man's... Hot? Don't think yeah. that's degrading. Yeah. Anyway. No. Um, anyway, according to science, Robert Patterson is the sexiest man alive. First of all, does anyone agree with that? One hundred percent. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. 
Yeah, he's. Um, he's I wasn't. I, have, I want to make it very clear for anyone watching that I'm not a Twi Hard. I think I've only ever seen the first Twilight oh, film. Oh, what? Oh, what? I love that. Twi Hard. <laughs> Twi Hards? It's what they call yeah. mega Twilight fans. Um, I think I've only ever seen the first one and it doesn't really do anything for me. But um, I think since he came out of that and took quite a distinct U turn in his career to the more kind of like nitty gritty, independent sort of type films, yeah, I've um, You're a fan. become a big RPATS mm. fan. Yeah. But what was interesting about this study that he's the sexiest man due to his cheekbones and yes. his lips, all these different percentages which has come up. as a, It's like, literally about how his face is yes. sculpted. It's mm. all perfect. To me, together, it's I, not the best. I, yeah, I I'm so with you agree. on that. And I was actually looking at all the diagrams of how they've yes, kind of... Yes, me too. But it, and yeah, for me, it didn't, yeah. Not, He's got not a good jaw, me. though. It's all yeah. about the jaw, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah. how... Yeah. Is, it all, is it all about the jaw? No. I think they say that. Yeah. If, you look at, if you look at a rosy Huntington Whiteley or a, or a model... Right. Or a Megan, the reason they're so photogenic is because of the jaw. Mm. Mm. Anyway, I suspect that's true. We're going to finish on the, on who everybody. We, we know yours. <laughs> yes, I'll stay quiet. Um, you're Robert. Tor. Who's David, your sexiest man? David Gandhi. Yeah. Tall, dark, handsome, ripped. Yeah, yeah. I love him. really. He's a bit clean cut. No, I love that. Really? Yeah. Okay, Big fan. good one. Bradley Cooper. Yeah, I like that he's a bit... Mm. We, we, we had a little fight about this, yeah. <laughs> I feel a bit mixed about him. Good days, bad days. Well, I think yeah. his personality as well. I, yeah, he's, I, I, I think he's looking a bit him. crap at the moment. I think, he'd, I think he'd bomb on the percentages. It doesn't... He, yeah, he I doesn't. Think he, he was quite high up. He was, oh, really? Yeah, I think he was number mm. three or number four. Mm. Okay. Just fight his corner. Who's yours, Georgie? <laughs> well, I've got one. There's been a chat in the office earlier. If it was a character in a film... It would be Jude Law and the talent of Mr. Ripley. Oh, all the holiday. holiday. Yeah. Uh, talent of Mr. Ripley. I, I, he's a bit of a shit. I find that like, quite attractive. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Shouldn't say that, but I do. Um, but my other is Chris Hemsworth. I mean, really? Oh, really? oh, babe, yeah. He's just big and muscly and he will just hold you really well. And what I about um, Tom Hardy? Do you like him? Tom Hardy? Yeah, I quite like Tom Hardy. Mm, what about uh, him? Um, anyway, <laughs> any, everyone seems to find on. that hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but strong arms, lots of muscles. <laughs> and if you haven't seen Rush, I mean, see Rush before you pass judgment on whether he should or shouldn't be top of my list. Um, anyway, it feels like we could be here a while. Uh, lovely to have you, Tor and Harriet. Um, we're going to be back after the break sharing the things we love, and there is some good stuff, so don't go away. Three, two, one. Hello, we are Laura and Dennis from Kaleidos. Is it your business? Yes. yes. Oh, well, we love your rolls. They are wonderful. Yeah, I could eat Kaleido rolls every single day. Why don't we arrange that? Why don't you deliver Kaleido rolls every, every day? Every single day, yes. Yeah, we would love that. Can you teach these guys how to make rolls? Yes. Mm. Fold it up to the middle. Try to press it. Fold the side. Fold the side. That looks all right. That looks all right. Super. Oh, then you can run it really pressing. Oh, you might have nailed this. Oh, my God. Oh, holy. Oh, 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 He's absolutely oh, nailed it. Yes. There. We are going to Sockwell House, St Albans. Yeah, in St Albans. I love a beautiful white building. And what is it? A beautiful white building. So you're in luck. So what have you gone for? You what? What have you gone for? <laughs> you what? I really just need. Uh, uh, last night's nitile hasn't worn off yet. Worn? worn off yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Maybe just relax. Go to your happy place. I'm face down in my sand bed, about to have my sand and quartz body restorer ritual treatment. Very excited. So Tori, if you'd like to take some deep breaths to start off. Everyone knows how much I love the Things We Love segment in which we bring you the hottest new things to know about across beauty, fashion, TV, food and more and we've got lots to get through. Laura, I'm going to start with you. Okay, so first up I have my new tablecloth from H&M. I've been looking at this with envy eyes. Yeah, yeah, isn't this amazing? Linen. Lovely. $34.99, I think it is. Love it. I, and I, I did also buy these, which is a bit naughty because I'm putting in two. But I'm kind of, I'm getting a bit excited about the summertime, a bit of tablescaping, a bit of foliage, some nice balloon glasses. I think that will look really nice. And these are again nice. like $6.99 or something. So For a set? F no. What, each? each? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But Very chic, think, yeah, Laura. Really I might nice. copy, I think. I like that a lot. Um, so this is my first. Then I've got these new <laughs> Itsu ramen broths, mm. which excite me a lot. I love a ramen, and I find it really difficult to make myself at home. Um, and these are, I think, they're exclusive at the moment in M&S, but you literally just add some greenery, some noodles, some protein, 
and what, what, are the, it up. what are the different ones? So this is chicken, ah. I think there's a miso mushroom, and then an original, a classic ramen. So sorry, there's no bits in here, it's no, literally it's just, just the broth. it's just the soup, yeah. Oh my god. That's so cool. good. That's clever. Yeah. Uh, that. Amazing. Love and that. delicious. Are they quite healthy? Yes. yes. And you could just take that to the office and have it in a mug, could you? Yeah, yeah, you could. Love, love, love. With some of those nice, really nice soba noodles. Yeah, mm. and some pak choy and mm. yum, 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 yum. Mm. They're really good. So good, okay. And then my third is a beauty, and it's this Viviscal. It's not new, but somebody recommended this to me after I'd had my third child, and I had three children quite close together, and my hair after the third just vanished. It fell out in clumps, and... I mean, I know I don't have flowing locks still, but this has made such a difference to me. Really? And I have, it, when I was looking about the details of it last night, I realised that you're supposed to take two a day, and I've been taking one a day, so... Uh, and it's made a so difference with me taking one a day, so check back in a couple <laughs> of months, ante. so <laughs> you never wow. know. It's, yeah. I've taken it before, it's really good. You have to take it, I remember for me, it was a solid two or three months before I saw any result, and then I was like, wow. But and I really, really noticed consistent. the difference in my nails as well as yeah, my hair. Which makes yeah, sense. Which makes and actually, someone was saying the other day that so often people buy supplements and things, they take it for a month, they go, I'm not seeing any effects, yeah. bin it onto the next, and they said you really need to need take to something for two or three months. Well, I'm not very good at remembering, so I just have it on my desk. I, I don't take it at the weekends, but if it's on my desk, I see it each day. Yeah. And I, mm. and How much? There. About twenty-seven pounds, I think, for so, a month's supply. Yeah, worth it if you're. Yeah, if it, you're I worried promise you, about. it's made a difference, yeah. and it, oh, no, I was becoming pretty self-conscious. So, oh, yeah. good to know. Thank you, Laura. And your top oh, is gorgeous. This is needle and thread. So I'm off um, to a lunch there after this, and they've got something exciting coming. Good. Can't, well, we'll keep quiet for now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Uh, Harriet, what have you got for so us? So my first things are new boots, which I have to say I was completely influenced um, by Cressida, our commercial manager, who had these on last week, and I just spied them immediately, and I was like, where did you get those boots? And... They're from And Other Stories, which yep. is great, mm. High Street. Um, Love them. I think they are some of the best. Of that sort of, you know, this is all inspired by Prada. And yeah. the Prada ones are really chunky and quite fierce. These are just cooler than a Chelsea boot, but not too fierce. I think they are yeah. brilliant. Charlotte's got a pair from Russell and Bromley, very similar. Very similar. Um, hopefully great. these are a little more um, affordable for some people. How much but yeah, um, 135. So not dirt cheap, but equally not sort of a Russell and Bromley price, if that's not in your budget. Real leather um, and just a stretchy, stretchy pull-on. And this fit, I think, is really nice because so often that can be really wide and they can become a bit wellyish, but yeah. it's quite narrow. Mm. I think yeah. they are really absolutely nice. fab. I really, really, really think they're like a great this. boot. Um, and then my two other things you can't sort of hold up and show you, but um, the first is a podcast that went into our roundup this week because um, I love it that much, um, which is Dan Snow's History Hit. If you're interested in history but you feel like you just don't know certain things, He's absolutely prolific on this podcast. He's a historian, but he gets on tons of different guests every couple of days for a new episode. And they tackle all sorts of subjects, although depending kind of what um, anniversaries are coming up, they tend to sort of speak about those topics. But if you're sort of not into heavy topics, there's also great ones on his history versus myth in the crown. So they get historians on to debunk what they've got right and wrong in the crown. Oh, really fun. Really um, Sam Mendes was on recently talking about 1917, which... Oh. I, I think this is this is so up my street, and I watch things like The Crown, and, and you feel so ignorant, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, I I we sadly gave up history too young. It, and I've listened to a couple, and his, it's his enthusiasm. It yeah. kind of takes away that old kind of boring school lessons of history, and you can't help but get kind of sucked in by it. And when really someone good. is passionate about yeah. something, they can be talking about how you make a beaded fork. You know, if they're passionate yeah, yeah. about it, mm. yeah. it's interesting, isn't yeah. it? And like I said, the topics are really varied, and so are the episode lengths. So if you've only got time for 20 minutes, there's probably something on there that's 20 minutes. If you want something on for an hour while you're cooking or whatever, there's stuff for that as well. Great. Great. And your final thing? Uh, my final thing is also history-related, but it's on iPlayer. Brilliant. Um, which is called The Windermere Children, um, which came out last week, um, I think it was last Monday, for um, Holocaust Memorial Day. And it's a true story, and I had absolutely no idea about this before the film Mm -hmm. came out um, and it's based on this story that after um, the close of World War II the British government agreed that 300 orphaned children from the Holocaust could come to Britain 
and specifically up to the Lake District, to basically rehabilitate back into society after the trauma that they had suffered. Um, most of them came from Auschwitz, although there were several other concentration camps involved. Um, and there was a programme on afterwards called The Windermere Children in Their Own Words, because six of them and are still alive. The film beforehand is a fictional, you know, it's a fictionalised oh, film okay. based on true events um, of that time, and you follow them as they go through this journey in the Amazing. Lake District. Amazing. And it might sound a bit dark and a bit heavy at first, but honestly, it's so uplifting. It is such a testament to mm. human spirit and what a little bit of kindness and compassion can do. Well, it's on my list. You've seen it. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Really Loved it. Right. Feels like. Not yeah. the right thing to say, yeah. but a, yeah. a, 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 good, watch. a good watch. Yeah, yeah. really good watch. Thank you. Thank mm. you. That is on my list. I must watch it. Tor, what have you got? So first up, another hair-related item is Philip Kingsley's Elasticizer, which is an oldie but a goodie. Um, I'm on a bit of a mission at the moment. I'm getting married in three months, and I put a lot of bleach through my hair. So I'm trying to use this once a week. I actually put it on before I go to the gym or for a run. So I leave it on. So it's a pre-shampoo treatment. Oh. Um, leave it on for about 30, 40 minutes. Well, well, and then you run with it in your hair. Yeah, I put, yeah. It's a good time to put it on, isn't because it? Because you, you know. Okay, so it's once a week, it's, and it's it's really, really, really good. And actually, we were talking really about that, good. and everyone went, "That is so good." Yeah, it's product. just it's a cult it's a cult, cult product it? for a reason. Okay. Um, good reminder of it. Yeah. And by the way, your skin is looking good. Mm -hmm. I really? mean, you are wedding ready, nearly. Oh, give me three months. Glowing. I'm almost there. The other thing that's really helping me at the moment is CBD, which we all know is ingredient of the moment. Um, I got sent these last week and I put them on my Instagram. My friend who lives in LA who's totally wellness was like tall. These are seriously strong. These are a thousand milligrams and I basically finished the whole thing in a week. <laughs> What do you do with them? Put them on your tongue? So yeah, so they say sublingual absorption is the best way to take CBD. Sublingual. So you put them under your tongue um, and hold them for about 90 seconds and then swallow. Not you Can, can you do it now? Let's watch. What, me not talking for, for 90 seconds? Okay, maybe not. Okay, um, <laughs> no, 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 impossible. Anyway, they're really good. I think... I've got the time ticking. <laughs> Everyone says, you know, what do they do? For me, they help me feel more focused without, like, like having coffee, but without feeling too jittery and really help with focus. Um, I think they can also help with stress, anxiety, pain. Are they expensive? These ones are about eighty pounds, but Ooh, but they do eighty eight zero. But they do other weaker versions, which I think they recommend you start with and then build up. But I've got some special straight occasions in. only. Um, Not to be used on the show when time's ticking. No, key. and also a <laughs> CBD balm, which is great. I refer to it as like a Voltarol, but without the drugs. Oh, great! Incredible. Really? Yeah, wow. it's really good. Really, really good. Oh, and well, my third one is a, po is a podcast as well. Um, Alice Azania Jarvis is a Sunday Salon. Sorry, what's it called? Ali Her name is Alice Azania Jarvis, okay. and it's called The Sunday Salon. Um, and each week she interviews a different female author about their story, the, their book they've written, um, they, basically the story behind the book. Aww. It's really nice. It's, there's something quite therapeutic about it, and her voice is really lovely, and it's just interesting. Awesome. We've it's missed you, Tor. <laughs> it's good to be um, back. <laughs> okay, right, I am going to finish off with mine. Um, so... These look a bit, these been through the washing machine about 10 times. You'd think that a white wool trainer was quite impractical. They've been, as I said, in and out of the wash. So these are my all birds. Um, I post these on my Instagram. I get comments. I get um, people messaging me about these the whole time going, I know you've got those all birds. Are they really that comfy? They, it's like wearing a pair of slippers. Are they vegan or recycled or what's the story behind oh, them? All of the above, I imagine. They're made from wool. Can I feel how light they are? Yeah, maybe um, that's There's an amazing How I Built This with light. Guy Raz podcast on with these. the founders on these, which I really recommend listening Ooh, to. I love that podcast. Um, I'm not mad on all the other colours. To me, it's these. These are the ones to get. But it's like wearing slippers, and it's so cold today, and this is just all I want to wear. So, And I love them with sort of black, le black leather leggings or mm. something. Sorry, um, silly question. Because they're wool, do they feel warmer than other trainers? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's literally like wearing slippers. promise you. I haven't worn these since they've been in the wash, so if you want to try them, you're very welcome. <laughs> I like. Uh, so that's my first thing. My second is a restaurant. I'm rattling through this because of the time. Um, it's a restaurant called Bardo. Mm. If you live in London or you're coming to London for a treat, um, it is in Chelsea's Duke of York's Square. And it's an area that I think is lacking in good evening restaurants. And it and is it's good for breakfast too. Ah, yeah, it's part okay. of the it's part of the caravan group. Exactly. So it's the same breakfast. guys behind the caravan um, restaurant, I think, as one. Pass. Anyway, it's a round restaurant, and it just feels really cool to be in there. And it's a great menu. It's not silly money. Lots of sharing things, and a lovely, lovely atmosphere. So I really, really would recommend Vardo. Um, two other things. One, Waitrose, glorious. 
parsnip soup. It's just so good. That's so random. It's really healthy. <laughs> parsnip it's soup. It's so tasty. And it really feels like it's, it feels a bit tasty, a bit like having a curry. But it's really, so if you're, if you're on a bit of a health kick and you want a filling and healthy supper, then I don't, know what, don't know what Amelia Freer would say about this, but um, she doesn't know. Well, that's great. Uh, what we don't know won't hurt us. It's really good. What were you going to say? Could you put something in it? Could you, you put. Do you know what I do? What? I, we were saying that we love fried lettuce. Oh, yes. Bit of soy. Fried lettuce. Bit. Oh my god, you haven't lived. Fried lettuce. I've put lettuce on the barbecue, but I never fried lettuce. Exactly. Yeah, same thing. Game changer. Exactly. So good. You'll thank me for that. Uh, and finally, is this top. This is Reformation. Um, it's off the shoulder like this or on the shoulder like this. Love it. Um, and it's just really cute. It looks really short, but actually with a pair of jeans, you don't have to expose any skin, which I don't want to. Anyway, £150. It's on net a porte um, kind of all year round. You wear that in the summer, you can wear it now. I think it's a great top. Love that. It's good, isn't it? Anyway, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Um, all, right, I'm just going to pop that there. All the products <laughs> will be linked in the show notes below after the break. She's the best selling author of four books and the all round darling of the nutritional world. That's right, Amelia Freer will be here talking us through the kitchen essentials you should have in yours. Hi, I'm Lou Huff. I'm Head of Fashion and Creative at Sheer Lux, and today I'm going to talk you through some of my favourite and key pieces within my wardrobe. Number one would be a very classic boyfriend shirt. When I'm getting ready, I want to wear pieces that make me feel good. They enhance my style, they don't take over my look. I couldn't talk about my wardrobe favorites without talking about this. So any opportunity I have to really dress up, I would wear this. The absolute basic essential to my wardrobe would be denim. I counted, I've got 25 pairs. This, just with t-shirt and jeans, pair of boots, my bag good to go. Like the rest of my style, I tend to keep my accessories quite minimal, um, but if I was going for a jazz accessory, I've got this hair clip, which is probably so on me, but um, I just think it adds a little something to a look. On days when you've got nothing to wear and you want to wear, wear something pretty boring, these are my go-to. From the tinned products that work with everything to a seriously versatile source, Amelia Freer's store covered recommendations should be taken as gospel. <laughs> she's a fountain of knowledge when it comes to feeding your body properly, and she's here today to share her wisdom and talk us through her brilliant new book. Oh, thank, Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Well, we're thrilled to have you, and <laughs> we've got to start with this. I mean, it is, it, I'm not just saying this, but we get so many cookbooks into the office. And there's one or two when I go, I'm having that one. <laughs> uh, it's simply good for you. It was out. It came out on Boxing Day. On Boxing Day. Yeah. And it's just fabulous. I love it because it's just got really real achievable recipes in it. Thank you for saying that. That was exactly the aim. Oh, good. <laughs> good. That's a relief. Um, so, so that's it. That's the concept. Yeah. I mean, I think that it, obviously I've worked with thousands of clients and I really live and breathe everything nutrition. And I've just sort of seen that people have become really fatigued by healthy eating and they've it's become mm. faddy and complicated and obsessive and women are either you know completely starving themselves and not feeling that they can enjoy food or feeling guilt and shame if ever they do enjoy food and I just wanted to say look there is actually a middle ground mm. we're all busy I know that people don't have time to be cooking from scratch uh, all day every day and since becoming a mum I completely relate and understand that so I just wanted to create really simple sort of everyday nourishing food for the busy person and that's that's what this book is about it is you don't you don't feel intimidated when you open it or that you're not going to have anything so yeah yeah you've totally done that good um, can you talk us through some of your favorite recipes in well, it's such a tricky question book. to be asked to choose favorites because obviously everything I, you know in this book is what I've been eating for the last couple of years my daughter's eaten every single recipe as well so they are kid friendly although that's you know, it's for everyone. But I think if I'm really pushed to choose 
um, some favorites. Um, I created some beauty bars because as we know, healthy yes. fats are really important for us and um, nuts and seeds. And so I just wanted to create something that packed in all of the skin uh, loving nutrients or as many as possible. And they're super, super easy to make. They're a great sort of snack that you can take for breakfast or have any time of day. Mm. Dates, chia seeds, nut butter, oats, I mean, so Delicious. all of the recipes are complete balanced meals. So I always make sure that I've got a portion of healthy fats, some protein and uh, some some kind of fiber or healthy um, fat, protein, fiber. Is that what we're looking for in anything? Really? And vegetables usually. But obviously you can't get vegetables into the no, beauty. Might bar. ruin it. Might <laughs> it. Um, well, I might try. Well, the next one of your favorite. I mean, this one, I sort of shrieked <laughs> when you when you pick this one. Soup for the soul. Yeah. Um, so oh, it's it's good. my sort of vegan version of that classic chicken soup. We all know when cold winter's day when you just yeah. want something comforting yeah. and nurturing. Something cozy. Um, but obviously chicken soup takes a bit longer to make. This is so quick. I think it's actually been the most popular book uh, recipe from the book so far. Really? The amount of people that are Instagramming it and sharing it with me. God, that must be it. so interesting for you to see. Because you never quite know. Yeah, obviously yeah. I have my, you know, I, I know other things. But I do make this on a weekly basis. It, it, you can make it in under 10 minutes, but it's really satisfying wholesome soup and i promise you i know that you know there's nothing wrong with buying the convenience things yes, like the she one gave that you the were thumbs just up to my well, sort of, glorious but soup, sort of. in the time that it takes you to heat that you could make this and this and is far more nourishing and honestly it tastes way way better than something that's been store and it's made. literally chickpeas onion garlic carrot stock and a bit of lemon i mean what i'm really proud of in this book is that there's lots of white space on the pages because i want people to yes. realize the simplicity that there's very few ingredients and it's all easy to find ingredients that you mostly have in I your know, cupboard you, you anyway. know when you get a recipe and they're like for the something and then yes. you're like for the this yes. and the, for the chickpea See, yeah, I, like, oh, I won't cook that i just i can't cook things that no. aren't i mean i just don't have the time no it's not my who style. does who does and then finally your one tray roasted winter salad so i've done these for actually all seasons because you know i'm passionate about eating seasonally yeah, and yeah. i grow my own vegetables um but i love doing these salads because you actually dress them before you cook them okay. so it's a slightly different take but all of the vegetables really absorb all of the um, oils and the flavors and it's just one pan you don't have to have lots of washing up, but trust me, it's so, so good. Oh, and and again, because to make it a balanced meal, sorry to interrupt. No, um, no. I've got a portion of fruit. I've got three or four different types of vegetables. So this is fiber, which we know we're short of in the UK or don't eat enough of. Um, plus it's got your protein. Um, I think that's from chickpeas. And are you, you're roasting the chickpeas? Yep, you roast the lot. <sighs> Roasted chickpeas <laughs> know, are amazing. a really, really good thing, aren't they? And yeah. you're dressing olive oil, balsam, Dijon salt. Boom, done. Easy. Yeah. Amazing. Easy, well, easy. I also picked out two of my favourites, and they were the miso and broccoli noodle pot, mm. which I don't think we've got an asset for, but hopefully everyone can see that. I mean, oh. Yeah, it's so good. It's and like it's, a healthy pot noodle. Exactly. And again, like those itsu things that you were just uh, showing, this is the same sort of thing, but you can make it yourself just by mixing the ingredients together, mm. pouring hot water. So um, good. So you don't have to spend a lot of money on buying... Yep. you know pre-made things not that i'm dissing those ones no 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 <laughs> but yeah no i hear you i hear you you do make it seem easy i have to say well there's and this belief that you know health eating is really expensive and you have to buy all of this yeah. stuff and actually i don't think it has to be and i did i i went through your book and i was like oh i know that ingredient i recognize that ingredient you Yay. know i i have that stuff in my house and i'm not yeah. really a cook so yeah. that's so great and i finally i mean this this is the one rich and i were having a bit of a love in over this one <laughs> this is pan fried sea bream with pak choy and tamari which is basically gluten-free soy yeah sauce i could eat that every single yeah, night of the week too and, it, and you can really I'm, i mean i make it quite clear in the front of the book how to adapt recipes so don't worry if you can't get sea bream you can use haddock or cod or whatever or salmon whatever you have available and pretty much all of these recipes can be made your own because we all know that you know um we're unique and there isn't one way for us to eat and we all have different likes and dislikes around ingredients so the point of this book is that you can take these recipes learn them by heart make them your own mm. and not feel a slave to the recipe mm. they can just become a part of your weekly repertoire this but isn't again, fancy food we're not impressing nigella with this but this is what well, we eat day i think in, she'd day be out. very lucky to eat any of this <laughs> frankly but uh, you know again all those ingredients everyone's got ginger pak choy lime Fish yeah. sauce, you know, delicious. Yeah. And sea bream, I think, is... I know, it's a good don't one. Don't be intimidated by sea bream. It's not expensive. You get it in any no. supermarket. Yeah. 
Are you intimidated by sea? I've never well, been. I, I mean, sort of, I think buying fish that isn't called cod or haddock. Oh, I see. Or salmon. For yeah. some people go, yeah. oh, I don't know what that is. Yes. And what would I do with it? It's just a bit of white fish. It's just white fish. But it's exactly. really tasty. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. it's brilliant. Thank Huge you. Huge congrats. Thank now, you. we're going to finish off looking at some of your store cupboard essentials. Yes. yes. Um, so, start us off. I mean, Extra virgin olive oil. It's, it's not a sexy list, but I think that's sort of the point because, of course, there's lots of really interesting and exciting ingredients that we can use if we're cooks or if we're really into food. But again, I'm just trying to show that, that this is real life mm. and we can be simple. So for me, having a really good quality extra virgin olive oil can, t can take, you know, plain broccoli and make it taste incredible with a bit of salt and a bit so of lemon. So you really think good quality olive oil is a game I'm, changer? I'm all about good quality extra virgin olive oil. You need to get it in a dark glass jar to protect the oils. So if yes. you see them in the see-through plastic, yes, that's a no. not so good. Okay. Um, oil absorbs estrogen from the plastic. So be always right? better to go glass and always better to go dark. And th this one is an expensive one, but it, you, you just need so little because it's so flavoursome yes. and ta ta um, nutty and delicious. But I just think you can make any meal taste good with good olive oil. Okay, good. I'm viewing mm -hmm. it in an entirely different way. <laughs> um, we've then got a jar of passata here. So in the book, I've got sort of weekly bottom of the um, fridge vegetable stews. And I just think if you if you get good quality, tasty passata, you can make any quick sauce for pasta. You can make you can poach some fish in it. You can quickly make a stew in a casserole. I'd never not have that in my cupboard. Does it need lots of flavour added to the passata? No, no, no. no. That, okay. If you get good, uh, you know, a nice one. A nice one. Yeah. Okay, next we've got oh, tahini. Oh, tahini. I've got such a, a, a passion for tahini. I just think a tahini dressing can take a boring plain meal, you know, some plain fish and some rice or some vegetables. Mm. Make a quick tahini dressing, which is so easy. There's and millions of recipes And what's going online. in there? Lemon, olive oil? For me, I'd always choose an acid, say lemon or lime, a bit of oil, a bit of water, and then maybe something, some spice like ginger or a bit of tamari okay. uh, or some chili. And, you know, you can really go all out with tahini dressings. You can add avocado, so you can good. add turmeric, you can yeah. make them different colours. It's so good to stay with green beans or any, exactly. you're right, anything. And then it's your protein sauce. And yeah. it's, it, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can now buy it in bulk in some shops. Okay. Um, we've got some oats. Organic oats. Yeah, so I love these ones. I mean, you know, any any good quality oat um, will do. But we know in the UK that we're just not eating enough fibre. And oats are a great way to make sure that you're getting some, some fibre. They're so quick to make. I make overnight oats or a bircher muesli most nights. And then it's just in the fridge, ready to I go. To get into that. It's so easy, Georgie, honestly. Mm. And my daughter loves it. Um, so I think oats are, are, are a sort of staple that we maybe have fallen out of love with and don't give enough high yeah. fives to. Okay, okay. noted. Uh, <laughs> chickpeas. Well, so I love this brand because they do it in glass jars and they do butter beans, they do um, cannellini beans. And so they, the brand just, is Navarico. So it's Brindisa, it's a Spanish brand. Okay. I'm obsessed with them. They just taste so much better than... Um, a tinned version. Okay. I don't know why they're just juicy and plump. But to okay. me, having some of these pulses, we know that most people are trying to be more plant-based and not eat so many animal proteins. Yeah. So this is your protein. You can make a salad, add half a jar of those, and that's your protein portion. Delicious. And you can make your winter soup. You can make your winter soup. You can make hummus. You can yep. make falafels. Um, I loved that you're buying ready... Peeled peppers. Yes. Well, who has the time to roast and peel over an, op uh, an open flame? I, I don't. It sort of puts me off. But I think, you know, this is where we can make the cheats and the shortcuts, mm. is having some of these things like these pre-cooked. I don't have time to soak my pulses. And I, don't, I just don't really have time to roast the peppers. And I think that these really still taste great. Um, and I like that these are in brine, not in, in oil. Yeah, well, I, I would normally go for the oil, to be would honest. You? That's okay. just not quite... I t tend to go for this brand, Brindisa. Um, for their peppers. They had them no, they anyway. didn't. Okay, so better to um, go for oil. Yeah, but I mean that you can make a quick sauce, you can make a quick uh, um, anything. There's lots mm. of recipes in the book that use mm. all of these. Mm. Finally, I know you're a fan of Steenbergs. Oh, I love Steenbergs, but I mean I love herbs and spices and I just don't, do we got? You, you cannot make healthy food a way of life if you don't have um, lots of herbs and spices in your cupboard because that's yeah. the way to take bland food. You know, if you've got the, the I mean that's just a variety, but you know, I'll often just make a quick curry. You need to know what the sort of four basic curry spices are. If you've got them, you can literally turn any vegetable, any pulse, any food in your cupboard in, or fridge into a quick curry. Mm. Um, so I think flavour is the way to go. Make sure okay. that you've got some good spices. Less salt, more spices. Yeah, mm. yeah, you don't need so much salt if you've got good quality ingredients. Mm. Mm. You can buy these in Waitrose, can't you? 
Uh, I think so. Okay. I don't know. I buy them online. But. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Amelia. My pleasure. Gosh. Thank you. It's been great to have you. Are you, you going home to cook? I, I am. <laughs> I am. My weekend is going to be spent making that delicious soup. Um, it's actually going to take me five minutes, not the weekend, because it's so easy. Exactly. Um, Amelia's <laughs> fourth book, Simply Good For You, is out now, and it will be linked in the show notes below. That's it for today. There's no show on Tuesday, so we'll be back on Thursday with a Valentine's Day special from Date Night Outfit Inspo to quick romantic meal solutions, whatever your plans. Don't miss it. Until then, a big thank you to all my guests. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, thumbs up, and tell your friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>